Hey there, I'm Ken, this is CRT, welcome. So I've noticed that uh, this month a lot of the retro community are putting out these Septandi videos. Then I thought to myself, wait a second, I like Tandy stuff. As a matter of fact, the next few videos I have planned are Tandy videos, as well as the last few that I've done. So I guess uh, this is my Septandi video, so welcome to my Septandi video. And what I am going to do today is I am going to take one of my computers that I just haven't been playing with enough lately, and that is my TRS-80 MC-10. And I am going to attempt to give it a disk drive. Sort of. So the first step in this process is that we have to go to my office computer because it's the only one I currently have with a CD burner. So let's go check that out. Okay, first thing we have to do is open up my MC10 emulator and inside there's a tools with a C10 to wave file converter. So in here you can see that uh, this is the converter and we have to choose sine waves because this is kind of like recording to a cassette I assume. And there's 44 and 22 kilohertz files that you can make. I'm going to do both just to test them both out. But we just go into our cassette files here, choose the one we want which we'll do with adventure and done. That's the 44 kilohertz one. Now for the 22 kilohertz. and done. So now take a look we go back into the uh, cassette folder and there's two wave files there the 2n and 4n which are the 22 and 44 kilohertz files. So we'll open up the wave file that I have here and I've done a bunch already but I'm gonna do a bunch more because I want to fill this disk up so I'll get to work on that and then we'll burn them to a disk. Okay, so I have a big um, list of programs done here, so now I have to open up Windows Media Player. And here we go. I was experimenting before. I made a small mini um, playlist here, but I'm going to create a new one here to, uh, for all of these programs. So, drag that over, and here we go. So now I think I will rename this as the second MC10 playlist. There we go. Now, Uh, I just have to, uh, yeah, burn this onto a CD. Now I gotta put the blank CD into the drive. And now I have to start the burn. There we go, we're done. So now I just gotta quickly take it out of the drive and put it back in to test out and see that everything is burnt onto there. And there we go. All of my uh, files that I burnt onto this CD and that is also a list of the track numbers for each of these programs that I'm gonna be using. So, now, Got to take it home and try it out on the computer. All right, so here we are with my MC10 computer. Still have the tape drive here. So first thing we have to do, disconnect that. And we can kind of move that out of the way. And now, 
We've got an old ghetto blaster here with the CD player on it. And we have my CD that I burnt. So this has all the games on it. So put that in here. Now I will get this all connected up and we can give it a try. All right, so I've got the computer hooked up. It's going, I've got the CD player with power to it. Now, just like when I was uh, using my iPad to load games and stuff and programs on here, I am just going to use the uh, input connector in the headphone jack on the CD player here. So with any luck that's going to work and I will try to load both the 22 kilohertz and the 44 kilohertz versions of the games to see if there's any difference uh, when, between one and the other. So we're going to start with the 22 kilohertz version of Adventure. That's the uh, same game that uh, you would play on your Atari 2600. There is a port of it on the MC10 computer. So. Let's check that out and hope it loads. Now the first thing we're going to do is select the proper track, which in this case is track two. This should be the 22 kilohertz version. Type in C load and hit play. And the disc is uh, going up and looks like it's working. Found Adventure. All right, it has loaded. Now I can try and run it. There we go. And there is Adventure. On the MC10 computer. All right, that worked. So that the 22 uh, kilohertz version works. So now it's time to reset this and try the try the 44 kilohertz version. Here we go. And there and play. And we have it going and it is working. And there we go, it loaded also. So both versions seem to work fine. We will see after we run it. There you go. Yes, it's running fine. There's also a really good Pac-Man game. And here we have some pinball. There's even a version of Tetris. And that's just scratching the surface. There is a large network of people still making games, homebrew games for this computer nowadays. There's a uh, MC10 Facebook group. There are people making peripherals for this. Um, I've got the uh, 16K expansion pack that was originally made by Tandy for this right now. 
but uh, there's also a 128k expansion pack that somebody made. There is uh, a whole lot of games available on the uh, TRS-80 Color Computer Archive site. It's just uh, an amazing little computer and it's a lot of fun. Now I know that there's not a lot of difference between doing this and just loading things off of say an iPad or an iPhone but one of the advantages to these old CD players is that they have the turn dial volume which allows you to fine tune it a lot more. I find with my iPad and my iPhone that as I was trying to load things often uh, it wouldn't work because the sweet spot for the volume seemed to be between two of the digital volume levels. So this way it's much better to fine-tune it and I mean really it looks a lot neater to have a little CD player there hooked up to your MC10 computer. There you go. It worked. I mean, going into this, I was about 90% sure that it would work, but now that I know that it does, I'm very happy, and I can now look to find one of those little Discmen, so that I've got a nice compact little disc player to take the place of this uh, big uh, uh, Ghetto Blaster boombox thing here I've got, and uh, then I'll have the compact disc player, to the small disc player to go with the uh, small computer. I mean, it's not going to completely take the place of the tape player because obviously you can't save on a disc any programs that you do on here. But uh, I'll have to use the uh, disc or the uh, tape for uh, saving. But uh, yeah, I'm quite happy. It makes loading a lot easier because you can just skip to the track you need rather than searching through the tape for the right spot. Anyways, uh, in case you're wondering, the uh, game behind me that's playing right now is called Rat Maze. It's a 3D maze game where you're a rat looking for the cheese. It's uh, another fun little game. So, anyhow, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, oh, and by the way, I did go through that entire disc that I burnt, and there was one program I couldn't get to load... So, uh, but it was one that I had uh, gotten the WAV file from elsewhere. So uh, everything where I uh, used the converter worked. Okay, so uh, if you enjoyed this video, you can give it a thumbs up. You can uh, subscribe to the channel, comment below, all that stuff that people always say. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down and all that other stuff. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'm going to play some games on my MC10 computer, and I will see you next time.